Hello, Hi, uh, my name is Alessandra Pantano. I am very happy to introduce to you Professor Herman Enciso. And Herman, would you like to share what is your passion in math? Hi, I'm Herman Enciso. I'm a professor in the department and I am very passionate about mathematical biology. That's my field, it's what I've been doing for a while and I'm glad to tell you a few things about it. Mm, mathematical biology, I wonder what it is. <laughs> Well, mathematical biology is any application of math to solve biological problems. Most of the time it works that way. You have a biological problem and you use math, especially mathematical modeling, to make sense of the problem using uh, mathematical techniques. So biologists will have uh, some experiment that they came up with. They have a number of quantitative uh, data points and they kind of know how to handle it qualitatively but you can tease out more information out of it if you do it mathematically. So uh, there's a collaboration here because the biologist doesn't really know how to do a mathematical model. The mathematician has no idea how to do experiments. And so you kind of like get together to do something together. And, and that's what I think is so beautiful about it. And I wonder if you could give us please some concrete example of things you could study. Yeah, so I'm actually just right now interested in a, in a very puzzling uh, problem. Uh, if you look at a pineapple, and uh, the pineapple has a bunch of little little uh, heads, and they form spirals. And if you count the spirals going one way, very often it gives you a Fibonacci number, like say um, uh, thirteen. And if you count them at the opposite way, it also gives you a Fibonacci number, like eight. And you can do this with flowers, and you get larger numbers, like fifty-five. And these are all Fibonacci numbers. And one question is how this happens. And so trying to come up with a mathematical model that, um, that gives rise to this, uh, to this um, behavior is, uh, can be a very elegant explanation. Wonderful. And I'm guessing it also has applications to medicine or other, um, other very concrete yeah. uh, applications. Absolutely. So for example, let's say you want to study how uh, COVID spreads in a population. So uh, one of the first things that people do when they want to understand a disease is they send in people who are essentially mathematicians and do a mathematical model that describes how the, how the disease spreads. Uh, the model has a number of parameters, you measure these parameters and you can tell how likely it is that if you have COVID, it's gonna spread to other people, how many people on average you're gonna uh, give it to. These are all, all mathematical parameters and it helps you to really understand the disease in a way that you could not without mathematical models. So this it's called epidemiology, it's an example of mathematical biology. It's very, very relevant and it gives you a lot of applications, a lot of impact in, in real world. There's other applications, for example, in uh, cancer, you try to describe how a, a cancer drug works and you do a mathematical model of how it kills cancer cells. Or you can study um, not disease necessarily, but how, uh, how uh, cells work on the inside and try to understand better what a cell does on the inside. And that can eventually help you cure diseases, but just by itself, how to understand uh, biology better. So these Wonderful. are all beautiful applications of mathematics uh, in biology. Now, to be a good mathematical bi biologist, you need to be able to deal with real world data and make decisions about what data you're gonna take into account, what aspects of the data you're gonna use and what you're gonna disregard. And the, those are skills that are very helpful in the, in the workplace because in the workplace, uh, you're always gonna have data, real world data is dirty. There's stuff that you don't care about. There's stuff that should be not used, stuff that doesn't mean something. And there's also stuff that you care about. And employers will be very interested in, in, in these skills where you can uh, make a model of something and, and make use of it uh, for real life purposes. Uh, you also use uh, learn a lot of uh, programming to do, for example, uh, simulations. Simulations are a very important part of this, of this process. And this uh, learning, for example, how MATLAB works will help you find a job in the future where you can um, even work in a company that's not about biology. You can learn about uh, finance, you can learn about uh, something else and, um, and, and still use uh, programming and still deal with real world data, some engineering application, let's say, uh, and make decisions about what to include and what not. So you, as a mathematical biologist, you make many decisions and learn many skills that are directly applicable in the workplace. So you are that, telling me that I don't necessarily have to work, uh, look for a job in math and bio after I complete the specialization in math and biology and I can actually apply to a variety of jobs? 
That's right. You can apply for other jobs that are not necessarily in biology. You can apply for engineering, you can apply for finance jobs, and uh, you have this number of skill sets that will be helpful for employers. Um, but also, if you do want to find a job in, in biology, there are a number of companies in, uh, in uh, Southern California. For example, there's pharmaceutical companies. Um, uh, I forget the name of the company that makes Botox. It's actually based, Allergan is based in, in Irvine. Um, there is, uh, uh, Amgen is based in, in Los Angeles. There are big companies that hire lots of people. Um, uh, there's, there's, I just talked with the vice president for research of Amgen and, and he was, he, he told me he hires a number of people that are mathematicians and do, do, um, do models um, of these problems. And so um, there's a number of applications that are directly using um, uh, skills to, to problems in biology. That's very interesting and promising. And uh, what kind of skills should I do? Would you expect an undergraduate um, to have when uh, they enter the specialization? For example, how much myology should they know, or how much programming skills should they bring in? So one one thing that's very nice about doing even research in, in mathematical biology is how little you need to know about biology before getting in. We have a course called 113, especially 113B. 113A is discrete math and biology. 113B is continuous math and biology. And you don't really need to know any biology. You can learn it, you can learn it from scratch, uh, take by taking these courses. You learn whatever it needs, you need on the way. Uh, the calculus requirements are very basic. You need to know two courses of calculus. There's some linear algebra that is used in 113, uh, but we basically teach it in the class, so you don't need to know any course in linear algebra, uh, and you can just go ahead and take the class. Along the way, you learn biology, and, and that's actually one really nice thing. We have also summer programs in mathematical biology where students don't know anything, and they're taught the relevant biology on the way, and they learn it very quickly. Um, you also uh, you can uh, very, very much use skills in programming, like, like I described. You can learn it by taking the courses, or you can learn on your own and then jump in. But it's a, it's a highly interdisciplinary. So you end up learning about math. You end up learning about very recent biology problems that are very relevant because somebody is studying them right now. And you learn about programming and computer simulations to be able to, to implement these uh, mathematical models. It's very interesting. I appreciate how you said that math and biology is actually opening doors to undergraduate research, right? That's right. So we have we have two we have a number of programs uh, and, and the university. We have the Math Bio U for undergrads, and we have Math Explorer for uh, high school uh, students uh, that come every summer. They've been coming here for years already uh, to UCI, either in person or virtually uh, during the pandemic, uh, where they spend six weeks doing research in groups in mathematical biology. They come in knowing nothing about that particular problem. They're told the problem, and by the end of the six weeks, they already come up with some new mathematics and some new research that can describe these biological problems. It's very hard to do this in other fields. If you do, if you're doing pure math, it's very hard to go from zero to new research in a, in, a, in a summer. And people people do it, but it's very hard. And biology lends itself to this because there's all kinds of new data that is coming in very quickly. So even as an undergrad, you could do, for example, uh, you could either take a summer program with UCI or you can go somewhere else, or you can potentially do research with a professor at UCI uh, or do an independent reading uh, or directed reading program with a, with a grad student in the, the field of mathematical biology and do new research. That's exciting, very exciting. So before we conclude, can I just ask you, how did you get passionate about math and biology? How did you enter the field? Uh, so I wanted to do math, uh, applied mathematics when I first started with my, my PhD program. I had done a pure pure math for undergrad, and I wanted to do something applied. So I learned econ economics, I learned computer science, I learned uh, some physics or engineering. But then when I uh, was introduced to my advisor, I really kind of fell in love with the field because he was so passionate about it and he was such a nice guy. And that's how I get, got into the field and I haven't looked back since. Wonderful. Thank you so much, and we hope many students will join you in this adventure of learning about math and biology. Thank you. Thank you, Herman. Thank you,